Hey guys, it's Aaron with Bowtie Treasures. Good evening. How's everyone doing tonight? Glad you can make it to Dixie Bell's Facebook page. I'm Aaron with Bowtie Treasures and I'm a Dixie Bell content creator. And I'm here to demonstrate tonight, as I am often many Saturday nights. And I'm going to be working on this old wardrobe behind me. And it's, I think it's 1940s-ish. Last night on my Bowtie Treasures page, we applied some uh, Would You Bend molding. My goal here is to take it from just a rustic rural piece to more of an upscale. So I guess we're upscaling this wardrobe tonight. I've already cleaned it with white lining and applied white boss. And then also the next step is I apply Dixie Bell's French linen. So that's where we are at this point. As you drop in, let us know where you're watching from and hopefully you're uh, ready to go tonight for a few minutes of chalk paint demonstration. I also have Dixie Bell's, uh, this is their stencil and this is the Morocco pattern. I'm hoping to apply that a little bit on the drawer fronts uh, just to give it a little bit more, again, more upscaling and we'll see if we get time to get to that tonight, but that's on the, on the schedule. I've taken the mirrors out and those are just a little bit easier for me to work around so I can get into all the details. And after doing a little bit of repair and all kinds of small work on it, it's ready to go. I think we're going to at least aim to work with two colors. Uh, since we already have French linen on, in there, I want to work with sandbar and I also want to work with buttercream. So a three color palette. Basically, French linen will be the darkest color, and then sandbar will kind of get us a little closer to buttercream, and buttercream will be more or less our highlight color. So that's that's our goal tonight. Uh, a couple brushes or a few brushes that I'm going to try and use is we'll use Dixie Bell's Mini. That's always a great go-to brush when you're working with large flat areas. I'll keep in hand the oval small. Those two are um, definitely great favorites of mine. And then I have a um, flat small. This will be really good if to getting into the details of the uh, Would You Bend molding. So those are three brushes that I'm gonna have on hand and we'll just grab them as we need to. I'm not going to be really doing a blend technique, but I'm gonna be layering from the standpoint of, uh, we're gonna go from dark to light and you'll see how I de demonstrate that tonight. Uh, but I'm gonna grab the first one and that's gonna be the sandbar. We're going to go a little bit backwards. Sometimes you can, when you're chalk painting and you're doing different, some depth to your piece, you can go, uh, you can paint light and then add shading, shadowing of shading and shadows around your decorative elements. We're going to let those, that color stay where it's at. Let me give you an example and let's bring the camera in a little closer and you'll see uh, how these layers are going to work. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Uh, the first thing, you're, so you're going to notice that I'm going to leave the um, coloring. So watch how I use the brush, but I'm not going to put the paint into the grooves. I want to let the paint, I want to work around that. So as I paint, the low lights, if you will, or the darker color will stay around so I don't have much paint it's almost like I'm dry brushing and but I don't want to push paint I don't want to wipe out the French linen altogether and when you're doing this let that French linen or your original color still be there and you're gonna get what I would consider or somewhat of a, of a layered look I mentioned the word uh, upscaling, but really the biggest thing I'm doing as far as upscaling is the Would You Bend molding did that. And then the technique that I'm doing is creating a, just a nice soft effect. So anywhere that you want to create a darker area, just don't put lighter colors there. So in this crack area there, we will leave we will leave it uh, with no extra paint other than the French linen. So as I go over it, 
I'm not pushing any of this paint into the crevices. I'm going over my molding. So in a sense, I'm, uh, I'm not working backwards, but it's just a different approach to take while you're working. And if you do this with multiple colors, you don't have to, but the multiple colors allow you, uh, more variety and depth to the piece. And you can use as many of these colors, as, as many colors as you want. I'm just choosing to do two. Three, that's going to keep me uh, somewhat in a little bit of a better color harmony, if you will. And the other thing that you can do as well is you can decide if you want to start fading. So maybe you want to have a lighter color and a at the top and darker at the bottom. That's another approach you could take. I'm not sure that that's how I'm going to go, but I've done that um, many times. So just move that paint around. Don't, uh, don't stress too much over perfection just because your brush strokes are gonna show in this technique. And I'm not putting much, I'm not putting much paint on there. I don't know if it's gonna catch it, but there we go. Just enough to keep it light. And then I'm going to use my a little bit of wrist action there to just feather that around. So I'm really not covering up all that French linen. I want it, I want to use it to my advantage. get in there. If you ever, technically if you had to, you could always come back with some French linen and kind of bring some of that back, but I would use the same technique. Just don't, don't do too much because you'll be going over your previous work. This technique will just give you a nice, soft, I hate to say the word cozy if I'm using the word upscale at the same time, but I don't, I, I've ordered a, a new lock, so my door just kind of clanks around. Sometimes on these old pieces, they're missing the lock and key, and you can put, you can do other things like little, you know, like magnetic, things or something to grab like this door has it where you can it grabs it but I'm gonna see if I can get a, a lock and key uh, replacement for that I think that'll be a nice touch because again if I'm going with more of an upscale look I think the lock and key makes more sense just and if you go back and forth up and down left and right crisscross it's gonna give you a little bit more of that maybe linen look. I like the idea of it like over time some of the paint has faded. So that's another reason why I'm leaving the paint showing French linen. French linen is such a nice delicate color. If you've never used it um, and you like a nice just warm tone I would almost say it's a warm tone gray. Let's do a couple of these drawers. I'm gonna move, kind of bounce around a little bit because there's so much of this piece to cover. But if I get a couple of these drawers done, then I can try the, Mor the Morocco So this brush, all I did was mist it slightly. It is not wet. And that gives you the dry brush effect, if you will. You really do want, and you can do as many as layers as you want, and you can use different brush size and types. But maybe we 
can get in a little close on, on that area. Let me see if I can show you what we're talking about on the technique. So you see there the how it has very much a brush stroke. And then look up here. Let's see if it'll adjust on you. When it gets uh, up near the top, it's a little hard to see. But yeah, you, you want very much a you want to see the brush strokes. Continuing our, so I'm gonna try and work around the top just because it's a little easier to get on camera. Let's work on the side. Maybe that'll give us a little bit better um, lighting. So you think about the, where you want the eye to be, focal point. And I'm gonna keep the French or the um, sandbar towards the middle, and I'm gonna leave the, a, more of this French linen towards the end. I'm not gonna be totally covered, but, and I like how it's catching some of the original, not original, but the, the character and things and all that. So here's our would you been molding. And what I wanna do is I wanna leave the French linen around the edges. So as I put color down, I'm purposely not going to put the sandbar in the corners because I wanna leave that almost vignette of darker color. I'm moving pretty quick and that's actually to my advantage with this technique and should also allow you to get a piece done a little bit quicker. And this will dry pretty quick because I'm not putting a lot of paint down. You see how I'm just going over. Just going over that molding. When you have a piece like this that's from the 40s, it's gonna have some life to it, and it's nice to not fight that. It would be really impossible for me to get rid of all of the character, if you will, so you run with it, right? I did, there is a huge hole about right here, but I have patched that, but there's still some scratches and things like that that I'm just running with. I'm not putting a lot of weight on my brush or pressure. I want to keep it nice and light. Getting a little thick. And down here, just, I don't want it to be 100%, I don't want, I want some paint to get in there, but I'm not, I'm only going in there when my brush doesn't have much paint on it. I don't want it to be freshly painted looking. I, I just don't want it to be heavy. Remember, I have one more color to go. So we are doing some layering of different tones. So I started with French linen. Right now I'm working with sandbar. And then I've chosen for now buttercream. But some I say for now because sometimes I will I need to go a little lighter than I thought. And buttercream is, as you can imagine, is more of a cream and not like fluff or cotton. So we'll see. I might still come back with a cotton or a fluff and even push the highlight more. But what I'll do is I'll process this video later for my YouTube account. And I'll, if I add any more colors to it, I'll state it there. But love for y'all to check that out um, as you have time. and. All right, let's do one more side. And by that time, we sh I'm not doing all the way down. I think that's gonna help us tonight stay focused up above. So one more side, just like the other one. 
and then we'll switch to buttercream. And we'll see also how we can use that stencil. If you don't have a mini, you could use an, you could still use an oval type brush. Um, there's a chance that if you wanted to, you could try the scarlet, but I'm not sure that you're going to have an, as effective. There's not as many bristles on, so for example, there's not as much potential for uh, those little areas because there's not as many bristles on the scarlet. So, although it might work, it might be a little, and the brush is stiffer. I'm really using a lot of that, this brush. So when you get your paint down and you've got just a little bit left on it, just use that to kind of get in some of those areas. this brush in water we're going to switch to buttercream we'll go back to the front let this side dry a little bit I'm going to switch to a different mini okay, let me swing this back around so by now you should be able to see two tones a darker and a lighter but we're about to even make it more dramatic or drastic because we're about to add highlight color. So this is buttercream. It may, it may communicate as more of a white, but... So here I'm just going to hit the edge. So now we have dark, medium, and light tones on here. Same technique as before, but I'm not putting as much. That's what, that's, uh, that's the look we're going for right there. Light hand, light amount. Now this brush already is, uh, got a little bit extra water in it because I used it earlier today, but that's okay. It'll start drying out as I use it more. But so I'm not using as much of the sandbar like I did the sandbar color, but I'm still using the dragging cross-hatch technique. Think about your highlights where you want them to be. Let's do the top here. Back and forth, light hand. That's, that's the beauty of doing a three color technique is you have a medium, medium light, medium tone, mid tone. So that's the, that's the difference. And you can see just from here, this side to that one up there, how the highlight is, is going to add. So let's work on this. This is not a new technique for me necessarily to demonstrate, but it always really just does a fantastic job if it's the right piece and it has the right... Like if you have a piece that has a lot of dings and things, this technique will bring those out and it goes, it, it plays in your favor. And sometimes you need that, you know, your piece is rough. So I, I just have um, carts that you can get at a pretty much a hardware store, Harbor Freight kind of place. I think if you go to my website, bowtietreasures.com and look at my shop menu, there's a link called Amazon and I think you can see those carts there. But yeah, they're just, um, 
just regular rolling carts. They're pretty standard for me. Uh, I don't use the, it's about all I use and they do a good job. Let's do this front of this drawer now. The hardware that was on this was so big and it was gr gr grinding whole circles and you can see it um, on, this, on this particular drawer. I tried to patch it, but that's really hard to do on a flat surface. So that's one reason I'm gonna be using, I'm gonna try the Morocco pattern on here. It's almost like disguising it a little bit. The hardware I have on here, so I'm not using the hardware that came with it because I'm not really sure that it was original, but I have some really nice antique hardware that I polished up. I think it's gonna look fabulous on here. Continuing the upscale plan for this project. I haven't, again, I'll go back and do the rest of the piece later, but I just wanted to show you how the technique's coming along, how I'm gonna do the whole piece. All right, so we have one more side to do the door. Yeah, well, let's go a little bit lower. For me, the, the only reason I chose these colors, as I said before, was that they were pretty close in value and they all had about the same color harm. You know, they, they were all warm and I didn't want to do a stark white. Buttercream's a good choice for that. Drop cloth might be another good choice. I almost painted this page piece in dry sage to start with, but French linen just screaming like you need to use me and it was a good choice because French linen goes with well for a piece that has a little bit of a country cottage and um, casual feel to it. So do you see it now? Do you see how the, the darker colors fading out? Instead of coming, instead of painting this piece, to give you an example, some people might paint a piece like this, buttercream and then come back in with wax or dark colors and do the shading. I'm working the way, I'm working backwards. Both are, are good and right. I'm having a little bit of the other color come through, so I'm painting a little too soon, but that's okay. Remember, I'm keeping my focus towards the middle and fading away towards the edge. Keeping the focus to the middle and not the outside edges. All right, I think that's pretty good. And if you do something like this, it's very forgiving, meaning it's it's all gonna work its way out and, and just be beautiful. You may have to come back over this a little bit later on after it's thoroughly dry. Okay. So what I want to do down here is I want to put this stencil. I was trying to remember last time I used it. It's got teal on it and I'm trying to remember that project, but um, so anyways, what I want to do is I actually want to use the same technique, but I want to um, and I'm going to fade it out. So i tell you what let's do. Let's actually bring back the French linen. I'm going to use my flat small. 
There's a lot of ways to use a stencil. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the hole for the hardware right here, and I'm gonna use that as my centerpiece. My brush is dry. I've not, uh, probably would be good to give it a little bit of a quick spray. It just gives it a little bit of a, I don't know how to describe that. It just helps. How about, <laughs> Uh, all right, I'm just making sure that everything's lined up. It doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so my French linen's here. And I just want a touch. And let's show you. That's about all I have right there, okay? Light hand. And I, I, I'm doing French linen because I want it to be a darker You could do this with a, um, like a stenciling brush or a flat. This is purely experimental. I have no idea if this is going to look good. If this doesn't work, I'll probably have to repaint the drawer front and start over, but I'm having good faith that we'll be okay. Paint doesn't last too long, but I'm using a lot of the dry brush. Just trying to touch the paint. Can't even see in there. There we go. I think I got it. So let's um, light hand. Very light. I want this to be faint, almost like it's worn out over time. Okay. So just a, dr a slight dusting. Let's take a look. That's it. That's how it should look. See how it's fading out? And then the focus is heavier towards the middle. Then the hardware will sit right there. And it, th so that's a great look. So underneath we have all those dry layers. On top we have another dry layer. So it just look, it's gonna look like it was meant to be. And this brings out the details. It coordinates really well with the wood you've been molding. And I think that's, that, that's looking really good. Of course, I don't have the other drawers done, so, but that's the technique I think that's going to work really well, and that keeps me in the same color harmony with the French linen, sandbar, and buttercream, and so that's all going to work really well. Let's play with that. Let's see. We're going to take a chance here. So some options here that we can do is I can fade around, but I think what would be kind of cool to do is see about, um, I tell you what let's do, let's do like a reverse highlight. Again, purely experimental. You're seeing, I don't even know how it's going to look, but so what I'm going to do is just do the corners. Okay. And then we'll move the stencil down a little bit of, not much paint at all. I literally just touch the brush to the paint. And I want it to be very light. Just a, a dusting. I don't even know if that's the best word, but I do not have any kind of adhesive or anything on this. I don't want much of it. This is Dixie Bell's, one of their three stencils. So that's it. That's that's all I want. I don't want this to overpower the wood you bend or anything else I'm doing. You said the name of this one is Morocco. Morocco. So just the corner. If you don't if you don't think you, if you didn't do enough, you could always put it back. It's not like, and I'm using the corner as my guide. Okay, let's do down below. We're gonna do all four corners. So again, I'm using the stencil as my spacer. I think that's perfectly fine to do. Back and forth, not much paint at all. There should be enough paint on your brush that it should, it's just gonna leave a hint of the stencil. And 
that's all I want. Totally up to you if you don't want the hard edge. You could, yeah, you could move away from that edge or not get to do much of that, but I think it's actually kind of creates a nice decorative frame at the inside there. This is the kind of the experimenting that I encourage you to try. The good, cool thing is Dixie Bell's got so many products that it gives you that opportunity to try some fun stuff. And that just totally takes it to the next level, doesn't it? Do y'all agree? What do y'all think? So we've taken this old rundown tired wardrobe and we're taking it to the next level and you've seen it you've seen me do it here it's not, I'm not doing anything that you can't do it's just a matter of experimentation and, and having fun so it's really great That's the end of the show. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell before you go. Bye.